Think for a second of your favorite classroom lesson. I bet no one's going to answer that. Oh, there was this one word problem. But yet we have word problems nearly every day in the mathematics classroom. So we're accepting that they're essential. So why is it that word problems make so many students and a few teachers feel like this? If Mary is 20 minutes and the train wind, how in the world did Joe get apples? Okay, we're having a little bit of fun here, sure. But it points to the fact that too often we don't really understand what word problems are trying to do. So let's ask ourselves a question that maybe we've never thought of. Why do we ask word problems? Are they really all that essential? And what are we trying to accomplish when we write our own question? Let's explore that. Maybe we would say real world problem solving. We see the value in exposing students to problems in the real world. That's great, but too often word problems are so remarkably disconnected from the real world that they don't make any sense. The best place to find a real world problem is in the real world. Okay, fine. Real world isn't really what I meant. They're not always real life, I know that. But don't word problems get students to think more deeply and to apply their reasoning? They can, but too often our word problems simply push students to resort to shallow strategies. We need to be posing the right problems, not just any questions we want with words. All right, fair enough. But even if I use keywords in my word problem, don't they assess math learning? They can. But if we're not careful, we hide mathematical reasoning behind such a thick layer of language that we'll never know if it was a mathematical struggle or a language barrier. Okay, this is not looking good for word problems, but let's not give up just yet. We've got to find something great in word problems. I know, I've got it. Some standardized tests have really confusing word problems. Shouldn't we expose students to them before they see them on the tests? This is where we need to be extra careful. The value of word problems is not just accountability. Shouldn't word problems have more to do with applying understanding and developing ourselves as mathematical thinkers? We wouldn't want accountability to get in the way of that. I mean, we would all agree with that. This is why we need to be writing the best problems we can. Even with our four attempts so far, we still haven't answered the fundamental question, why do we ask word problems? The great news is that deep down, we already know the answer to this. So let's just make it clear. We want students to understand the situation. We want students to develop their own strategies, decide for themselves what math to use. We want them to go about applying their strategies and their mathematics. It doesn't have to be tied to the real world or be on a high stakes exam to be valuable. Notice that none of these goals mention words. This is because words aren't the goal. Words are just a tool. And sometimes words aren't the best tool. I mean, just think of that soul crushing silent stare we've all had when we did something wrong. That is way more powerful without words. In the same way, words can get in the way of mathematical learning. Despite our best intentions, too often our word problems have been hindering students from developing as problem solvers. So when words are the tools we have, how can we ask better questions? Here's a few tips. Tip one, make sure that students decide for themselves what math to use. Here's an example. If you read through this problem, you'll see that we've reduced the situation to a couple of key trigger words. There's not enough depth here. We can get so much more reasoning out of this problem. Here's a better example. I want three candy bars at the store. Each are $2. I also want an apple for my mom. That is $1. At checkout, I decide that I want to replace a candy bar with an apple. What's the total cost? This problem now doesn't say takeaway or any obvious trigger. We have to understand for ourselves that addition and subtraction can help us, and we have to use that to problem solve. Tip two, it's not about words. Words are just a tool we use because they're efficient, but we need to make sure we're using them as effectively as possible. Avoid making language an unnecessary barrier. Here's an example. Grace has six dolls called Shauna, Maria, oh boy. I'm already losing track of what's happening. We are trying so hard here to make a situation for students that we're throwing so much fluff in here that isn't necessary. So let's just clean this up a bit. Grace has six dolls. After buying two more at the store, she gives a doll to her friend and one to each of her two sisters. How many more dolls does she need to buy to end with 10 dolls? Now, our third and final tip for today. 
We want the situation to come alive so that students can think for themselves and to model with mathematics. Make sure that students can make sense of the situation. To be a good problem, it needs to require that students can internalize what's going on. Here's an example. There are cows and chickens in the field. The farmer counted eight heads and 22 legs. How many chickens and how many cows are in the field? What's great about this problem is that students have the freedom to develop strategies for themselves. It's not a plug and chug question. It requires that students develop their own way of doing it because the question doesn't read as being formulaic. Students can't just simply add, subtract, or plug into a known formula, or just use any other memorized procedure. You have to develop your own strategy. You have to rely on quantitative and deductive reasoning. You have to truly problem solve. And this really isn't this the goal. We want to develop students as mathematical problem solvers. When words are the tools we have to develop students as mathematical problem solvers, we just need to make sure that we understand the tool and use it appropriately. Remember, sometimes less is more. If you'd like to read more about this or download our quick tips guide, check out our blog or download the PDF found here. Thank you for watching.